Hello. What's up? Yes. I'm live early. Live early. Early live. Well, once in a while, I guess I'm fucking on time. Just kidding. Uh, been reduced down to one camera tonight. Another one, it's got a bad connection in the wire. Hang is dead and wah. Uh. For anybody who doesn't speak gibberish, that means, uh, yeah, I need a new I need another one. But I got another one. I think I'll get another one just like this one. Seems to work better anyways. But. Yes, we're smoking some ribs tonight. We've been smoking some ribs. Uh, I will go over what I did to the ribs. But first, it's probably about time to wrap the ribs. So, Let's go look at the ribs, right? Let's go look at some ribs. All right, as you can see, we got the pit boss. Vertical Smoker, Series 3. in here. We're going to go all the way out here to the station. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. So, Ronald's wrap.
Let's go over this. See how uh, you got a little burn on the on the bone there, the marrow. Uh, see how the meat's pulled back there. It's uh, it's firm, kind of set. Uh, they gave me some nice ribs. These are nice meaty ribs. For spare ribs, these are really meaty. Uh, we're going to wrap them now. So, let me show you how I'm going to do that. This is the part that I'll show you. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, though, I mean, when it comes to uh, what you use for your rub or your anything like that is all in your preference. However you want them. Sweet, hot, spicy. However you want them. I'm going to lay out one sheet here. Honey. Right now. Uh, yeah. You're going to go in with a little Tabasco since I don't have any red hot. I like a little spice. Then we're going to go in with some brown sugar. First one. Don't forget the other side, right? Ooh, all right, fault the hole, see? And that goes right on, right back on the smoker, just like that. We'll get these other ones ready first. I've added way more stuff to wrap. Uh, you, it's all up to you. You do you when it comes to cooking, as usual. You want to do uh, regular white sugar? You go for it. You want to do the raw turbino? You want to do some molasses? You want to do some? If you you can't find sriracha anymore, so that's out of there. Uh, you can find the substitute for sriracha. Can't remember what it's called. Phil Fun might be able to fucking fill this fu <laughs> in on that one, huh? But. I, I used to put liquid in. You can put Coca-Cola in. You can put coffee in. You can put whatever you want into here for the liquid. If you want apple juice, go ahead and put some apple juice in there. It's not all that necessary, though. As a matter of fact, I, I find it uh, gets a little bit too much uh, 
Uh, Paul, uh, it, it gets a little too hot. Steams a little too much with the steam. So, going dry. Going dry. Second one. And that those ones that I just wrapped up would be the whole competition ribs. Whereas these little ends here need way more cooking. Which is always kind of weird because, yes, they are smaller, but they just, there's more fat, there's more, just more on that part. And it needs more cooking than the rest of it anyways. So, that's why I square off the, the uh, St. Louis. Which... There's another, I guess, matter of preference. Whatever you want to do. Okay. All of these go back in the smoker. I'll be right back with that. Down to one camera. So, yeah, anyway. Let's, uh, let's talk about ribs, huh? All right, ribs, 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 ribs. So, everyone talks about the three to one method, and I'm going to tell you about the three to one method. If you have an offset smoker, the three to one method is probably going to be you, know, you better have temperature. Of Temperature of 200 for a while. Don't go too high because you'll overdo it. Uh, although 
My preference is to to make ribs into sandwiches, pulled pork sandwiches, basically. But <clears throat> to make competition ribs, three, two, and one method is is kind of flawed in a way that uh, if you hold the temperature that they say, like two twenty five, two fifty, you, you're gonna have there's gonna be two done. Ah, uh, <clears throat> offset smoker will give you a lot of smoke flavor though too. So, you know, I need three. Whereas I have a pellet smoker, and I can't just go with three. I need four. I need at least four hours of smoke. So, and after that is probably about one hour, which we're looking at probably yeah. one hour from now to an hour and 15. Hmm. Which reminds me. Had to have to bump up the heat a little bit. Uh, so kind of a trial run for what it would be for the rib off competition. Uh, I marinade or marinade. I, I use pineapple juice as a brine. Yes, you did hear me right. I said brime. A friend of ours says M, so it's, it's brime. Brime time. So, <laughs> uh, I know it's brine, whatever. Uh, that and pineapple juice for two to two and a half hours. Take it out. Pad dry. Put whatever rub you like on it. Let it sit for half an hour. Put it on the smoker, 225. Uh, with the pellet, with the one I have, uh, it's about four hours of, of smoke. And then it's probably gonna be about an hour of wrap. And then it's going to take me 15 minutes to, to Weber grill style uh, cake the set the set the barbecue sauce. Now I use other people's rubs that I could spend you know, a couple of years trying to figure out the perfect blends of perfect spices and everything else and try to get my own rub and, and try to do that. But somebody's already done that. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have done that. And it's the same with sauces. I can, I can take a sauce and juice it up, though. And same with the rub. I can add a couple of things that I want in it as well. But for the most part, those people have spent the research spent the time to make that rub and that sauce to be what it is. And, and I usually kind of stick to that. There's no, like I said, I could spend the next five, 10 years making, coming up with a rub and a sauce, but that's not working on cooking the, the ribs either. Right. So I I usually use a couple different blends of, of things you get in the in the supermarket. Experiment for yourself, you know. What I mean, same thing with rubs. Experiment for yourself. Try this one. Try that one. Uh. 
Uh, now, the one biggest secret is is in an hour from now, probably just about an hour from now, I, I seem to be a, I might be a little bit not on schedule. Oh, who knows, right? I might have wanted to put some liquid in them because they seem a little me, but I'm worried now. I see I worry myself the whole time. No matter what, you're going to wonder how it's going to come out in the end every time. That's just the way it is. Uh, but once I get to and I, I will, after a little bit here, I will temp it. This is the only time I temp it. And when I get to 195 to 200, I start thinking about turning the, the heat down. And then consistently turn it down until, well, until it's, uh, until the smoker's off. And then let that little bit of rest, get the Weber kettle going, and bake my sauce on. And she going. And it's got to be all by 7 o'clock. That's my timing. I can't fuck that up. Which those ribs really did look meaty. It, it was ribs I got last year. I thought I was going to use it for the competition, and then I done. And then I back and field and froze them. Not totally a year, by the way. October of last year. So. Yeah, there it is. I mean, in a nutshell, I guess they say. Ribs are relatively easy once you get the 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 uh, once you actually figure out your smoker, really. Once you figure out how that thing works and what's going on, hey, bring it out. You know, that's that's when it's that's when it's good. Right? Good, right. Yeah, good, good. But we'll see. As a trial run, we'll see what this turns out to be. Okay. I, I'm 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 worried that they're gonna take a little bit longer than I expected, but I don't think so. I think I got them pretty much just about right on time. But they definitely have some mahogany smoke looking color but we'll see let's see what else uh yeah well i'm just three two one doesn't always work Three, two, one is just a suggestion, and you, and you gotta think that way in cooking at all times, anyways, because some a recipe can call for this amount of time with this, and sometimes it just doesn't work that way. It depends on your elevation, your stove, your all kinds of environments like that. So, yo, blue line, big butt, what's up? 
I'm cooking the ribs. I, I'm starting out early this year. You're going to be ahead of all you motherfuckers. Although I think... I, I don't know. I'm... I'm probably... Probably right in the fucking... Got to be in the fucking 200s now. For... Maybe not. I, I I'll say a hundred, almost almost two hundred racks. I almost got two hundred racks of ribs under my belt. Probably close to that. I'm probably over that actually. Now that I think about it. I've done a few racks of ribs. Yeah, it's probably over that. Not in one smoker, though. I did a lot in the Weber Grill. I did a lot with the Weber Grill. And, and there's a few times that you can hit it spot on with that Weber grill and almost better than doing it in a smoker. <laughs> I've, I've, I've hit it a couple times, but you only hit that, you only hit that mark by chance. And the rest of the time, you're, you're, uh, yeah. The rest of the time, it's a little bit difficult. But with this smoker, I can get it perfectly cooked every time. And now it's just all into uh, flavorings and all that. Try. But yeah, as I was saying about the, the temperatures and everything... When, it, when you, between 190 and 110, that's your golden moment. That's that's where you want to keep the ribs for a while. That's why I temp right at the end, closely in, to see what it is. And if it's 105, I start thinking about, or 205, sorry, 205. I start seriously thinking about limiting the heat if almost turning it off because residual cooking, residual, yeah, uh, and and other factors will will keep on heating those ribs and you'll get to that perfect 208, 209 mark. And uh, you'll rest at the same time because it will come down in temperature slowly. Uh, not that pork ribs need that much rest because it's so small of a meat in there that obviously, but but a little bit don't hurt it. And just to just to firm back up for a second and then go back on to getting the sauce cooked on and bam. I mean, there's many ways to do it. Lots of people gave up on different things. I'm, I've never had it. I've never really had it side by side with the pellet stove and, and an offset. Someday, someday I'll get to do that. But. but. Yeah, they're on there right now. Why? You coming over and need some ribs? It's gonna it's seven o'clock. Seven o'clock is when they're going on, or at, when they're done. That's my schedule. It has to be my schedule. No matter what, seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, they have to be out. 
I just said it. Seven o'clock. They have to be done. All right, that's my schedule. That's that's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'll get eaten. <laughs> but as you can see, I didn't put a lot of stuff. There's been times when I've gone like 15 different things in the rack and just you, you get a, you get that huge candied rib that there's a little bit of pork enus left to it but really it's just like a bunch of a candy <laughs> candy that's a little bit hot little bit sweet, little savory. That's awesome, but I'm I'm trying to balance out a little bit of that nowadays with a little bit of pork flavor. It's got to have some kind of semblance of, of what it is without overpowering it, but have have such a good flavor but you, you will remember that over the rest. And, you know, tell you how it's done, tell you how to cook it. I'm, you, you go with you on the flavorings. Do what you gotta do. Everybody's different when it comes to that, too. I mean, everybody's palate is different. My palate is really fucking weird because I don't really. I, it doesn't discriminate. Let's just say that. Not really. Ah, uh, five thirty three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be good. I'm st I stopped worrying and now I just got total confidence, right? <laughs> hey. You know, you gotta have confidence in yourself sometimes, right? I mean, look, look at this guy. He's like, what do you want? Not the usual guy, is he? He's like, you know, not climbing around on the table and shit. Right? What, dude? What? What? Can I have my hand back? Huh? Thanks. So, yeah. Anyways, this this is in my living room slash now studio ish. Uh, yeah, golf clubs and bicycle stuck in over there and whatever. Uh, he don't care. Where's Abby? Abby Abby just doesn't like being on camera, does she, Jim? 
That's why we call her the rare Abby. The pit boss has hit terminal velocity. I'm going to tell you guys one thing about that the pit boss, that one. Anyways, if you just try to turn it on and turn it right up to 400, don't do that. It'll overheat. It'll try to push too much, too much, too much, and all of a sudden... That's too much and it'll overheat. Don't do that. Slowly work it up to that temperature. You can achieve 350. I wouldn't go much more than that, though. <clears throat> I usually don't even go to 300 on the smoker. It's low and slow. It's not... Anything fast. I, I got other things to sear steak. I got other things to do what I need to do as far as that goes. So, I don't try to push my smoker that hot. I've started... Okay. Whatever. I, I'm just going to sit down for this one. Yes, I did start my smoker on fire once. But it was fine. Just kidding. It wasn't fine. It wasn't fine at all. But I, uh, yeah, I resurrected it. I had to change the, uh, heat sensor out of it. The heat, uh, you know, the thing. And I had to, uh, I, I did a brisket and in the middle of the brisket, well, almost at the end of the brisket, the, the auger stopped working. So I had to clean the auger out as well at one point. And that's pretty much the, the maintenance that I've done to that thing. But looking at it and knowing now pretty much damn near every part of it, I, I feel confident in being able to order any part for that thing and keep it running for as long as it as long as I can get parts, I guess, if they break. Hopefully not catch it on fire again. Clean your fucking smoker before you fucking start your next cook. That's my advice. Every time. Every time. I And I cook for long cooks. So, long cook. I don't cook. To, no, there's nobody. Never mind. My smoker's on for long periods of time cooking meat and the grease that gathers in the tray below needs to be replenished at times. So, don't forget about that shit.
So, yeah, another thing about cooking this way and having the, the that much meat on there, there's probably a little bit more rat fat to render, rat to fender, fender strider caster, you know what? Never mind. So, yeah, yeah, there's. Hopefully it'll break down and uh, we'll be good, right? I know it's got to break down more, though. I'm not going to check it right now. Not going to go close to it. You'll be fine. All right. What I do have to do, since I only got do I only got one camera going here. I have to go to here first. Gold, this other one, gold. The other you were, yeah, no. <laughs> so we are an hour and 16 minutes away. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using quite a bit of that here to get these done the way I want them. And I, like always, uh, you know, depends on the rib too, depends on what it looks like. It's any given Sunday, you know? Right, right, Jim? Jimmy? Jim. Jim. Ah, oh, he's out. Jim? Jim, you hear me over there? So 
look at this. I got some some of this, Jim. I get if I can get it to work. You don't have to have any. Where's your sister? She'll take a hit. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's camera shy. <laughs> that's right. All right, so, anyways. Coming soon. We're going to have some ribs. Hey. Just kidding. We're definitely, we're definitely going to have some ribs. <sighs> well, after five rat. Yeah, yeah. We should be thinking about checking them pretty soon here. And this is where the thermometer comes in. And, you know, a lot of guys will be like, oh, I don't even blah, blah. And, yeah, yeah, that's true once you get a feeling for it. On your smoker and the way it works. On this smoker and the way it works. This is what I've found to be the best way to do it. And either way, I'm, I've always said the whole poke in the steak. Yeah, here is it. The, <laughs> Sorry. I just fucking put a fucking thermometer in it. How hard is it to make it perfect if you just use a thermometer? I mean, if you're in a restaurant, I get it. I've been in restaurant situations just like that. Where, you know, you had to know where that, you, you, you can't, can't temp everything. I mean... Some places, I'm sure, do that, but I we never did. Every restaurant I ever worked in, you just knew when it was what it needed to be, whatever the customer wanted. Well done. We still threw it in hell, what we called Hell's Kitchen or Devil Devil's Oven or, or Hell's Oven or whatever it was. But, yeah, I mean, you don't have to go buy all that shit. Just tuck the temperature of stuff. Just to be sure. There's, there's no problem with being precise as you're cooking. As a matter of fact, in some things in bakery, you have to be pretty much precise. So... Why not, you know, right, Jim? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, 
Hey. You know you're on camera, right? That was right there. Just me and the fucking cat. <laughs> uh, that's pretty hilarious. So, yeah, anyways, when it comes down to ribs, it's, it's, once you get to know it and once you get to understand what you have to do, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty simple at that point. Just consistency is the key. Because once you get consistency down and you know you can put out the same product every time, then it's all about just going with flavors and, and experimentation. And yeah. So, I mean, like I always say, there's lots of different ways to cook shit, of course. But, uh, you know, you, this this style isn't so much traditional as it would be with wood smoke, actual wood. But it's more, it's more traditional than... Parboiling. Yeah. Wow. I understand the the chemistry behind it and and whatever. Parboiling. But anyways, I I feel the way. I'm doing it is a, the, the typical traditional way. And I'm going to say, if you want to put out a rib that's good, unless you're, unless you're parboiling in a way that you're cheating. No, just kidding. I'm not going to say it's cheating. Uh, it's not cheating. But, I mean, Sometimes you're going to get a judge that likes it one way. Sometimes you're going to get a judge that not way that he likes it another. So it's not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I like the traditional method and I can pretty much get it down. No, I'm going to win. That's about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody that wants to watch team war, hey, more power to you. I'm going to just tell you, though. Come on over and fucking join the fucking competition. Hey. But you know, is it, I didn't win the whole thing. I haven't won the whole thing, like with the judges yet. Third twice. Won the Lily Award, of course. I don't know that. Uh this year I'm coming back for that one and I'm gonna come back I'm gonna take the other one as well just saying
But you're more than welcome to what's the word? Oh, try. Uh, that's funny. Sorry. Uh, I'm yeah. What he wins one fucking trophy and he's like no fucking thinks he's fucking god. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so <laughs> I've let them go right now for 45, 48 minutes, something like that. So I got to gonna have to go check them in probably 20. Jimmy, all right over there? You, you getting comfortable? You want to hit? I mean, I'm just asking, dude. You don't have to react like that. So yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to this. Uh, you gotta hit my American temp. In another ten minutes or so. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I'm worried a little bit. So. There was some thick meat on that. The different. I mean, and not that that's a bad thing, but the difference between cooking something like that and a, a fattier one, it, it can be worlds apart. I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden you, you make the greatest rib ever and, and then next time do the same thing and it just didn't work, right? Different, different cow. It's, it's kind of like the humans, you know? The thing about my pecs can compare to the rock specs <laughs> or something like that, you know what I mean? You're gonna get you get much more slab of meat off the rock than you would me. But anyways. gotta be getting close I also like I talked about juice and, and anything you want to put in there you're welcome to do it I don't anymore because uh, the meat itself and the fat and the render creates its own juice and for the most part I've had it now nah, but I don't know if that was not wrap right or what that you know like I said I cook a, a bunch of them but uh, for the most part I've, I've found out that they create their own juice you don't have to put anything in there and as more time you keep it in there the more juice it creates and the more it steams and, and softens up that's why you put it meat, meat side down as well. So the meat side is actually in liquid as it, as it 
It's going. Yeah. I beat. I'd be right, right on schedule if I hit. 195 right about now that's about where I'd be or I'd want to be we're going to test that we're going to test that right here live no Fuck it, well they're alive. I got people. All right. Uh, how you doing, buddy? You want to go out and check it? Let's go out and check it. You can smell it. Check these. Do 
Did you see that temp? <laughs> it's probably, uh, don't, you know, probably went near a bone there to say it was that, but test it in this one. Yeah, see, we got 209. Oh. Yeah. Turner Tully, uh, Turner, Tina Turner. I want to see this back one too. Holy. She is way over. In a couple spots. But that's because it could be next to the bone. It's hard to tell where the ribs. But. As far as feeling, yeah, yeah, yeah. These things. Let's do a set. I'm going to shut the smoker right off. Shut that up for a bit. Oops. And we're going to get our other stuff ready. That is it. The, the meteor. It is, I'm, I'm still learning a little bit on that. I mean, seems the meteor that it is. The higher that temperature went up, the quicker it went up. And everything else. Let's see. That's why I still I don't go with the. That's why I don't go with the three to one method. But, anyways, while that smoker is cooling down. We are going to start, and by the way, right on schedule, right? Damn near. Anyways, uh, we are going to start uh, thinking about bringing them in here after it's cooled down. Start. Uh, we got actually. We got to think about starting the grill right now. So, grill, yeah. I gotta go out and start the grill. Hold on. I'm gonna go light the fires, man. Go light the fires.
<sighs> I'm still alive. I didn't burn myself up. Just kidding. <sighs> All right, so clothes are starting. Let me uh, show you guys. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to use. This cup and more here. <laughs> wow. What am I doing out here? Oh. That's it. Using stubs. See? Told you. They already made it for me. Why not? Why not just use it? They've perfected it more than I can. So, at this point, anyways, they perfected it more than I can. So, they stop. I mean, I could take this and add a, a few things to it and, and cook it a little bit down farther and make it a little bit more of a glazy thing and, and do some stuff with it. Sure, any barbecue sauce, I could do that with it. Yeah. So, there was one year, I won third, and uh, I took, uh, what's it, Chick-fil-A sauce and cooked it down. That's what, what the sauce was. So, you can you can make a sauce out of a sauce if you want in that way. So, either way, I'm going to remove the cat from the table here, find my brush, yeah, it's a small one, where's the piggy? Piggy Smalls. Over here. There you are. We got our nylon brush. Jim. Ultimately, it doesn't really take that much money to make ribs, guys. Truthfully, that and, and it's, it's, it's versatility to have different flavors as, a, as like a blank canvas makes it great for competitions. But I'm going to bring in... Them ribs. We're going to have a look. See if I fucked up or not, right?
All right, so see that little bit of juice right there? That's a good sign. That's a real good sign. Same thing. Yep, yep. Jim's watching over, making sure everything's all right. Jim, is everything all right? All right? Yeah, okay. Good.
little drop of light in the uh yeah charcoal in the snow smells awfully nice in here let's check these out right Wait, the tripod is a uh, yeah, big bad bad limb. Bad limb. It's got it's got bad limb. And I see the difference. This fatty one that was thicker, more meaty, has more juice, right? Right. Right. Now I'm thinking of a new idea here. Think you gotta think on the fly sometimes, right? We are going to take this Yeah, those are beautiful looking Those are some lovely looking ribs I guess if I say so myself Give that a little mix. How am I doing on time? Huh. I don't even know. Don't forget the underside, though. But we're going to do that when they hit the grill out there. Give them a nice coat in though.
All right, guys, let me tell you something right now. Uh, hold on. Hold on. So I'm having trouble lighting the coals out there because of the snow and everything else. Should have done something differently, I guess, in that situation. But uh, starting to uh, get a little panic setting in, like I wasn't going to finish on time. But uh, check the clock. And I got half an hour. Is about. So that's that's why you start. That's why it's nine hours, not five. Because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, anything could, anything could ruin your day at any minute. I think they're finally starting to catch so not that not that I'm too mad at that because I'll just sit here and keep on doing this. You know. I mean you can eat these right now and they're not gonna be bad. Just having that little charcoal extra kick uh uh, tackiness to it, yeah, stickiness almost. You just you remember a rib like that, right? I'm gonna have to take these back, and when I get them done, I'm gonna have to take them back in like this and get the picture. So. I'm into all to, to the photo op thing now, I guess. I like the splatter, right? Splatter of the sauce around like that. Pull this one down here, that one down there. These two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? I mean, hey. After I get the photo shoot done, we'll, we'll do a taste test. Uh, oh, of course, I'm... I'm already going to tell you, these things suck right donk. Looks, it's it not all about looks though, right? Yeah. But this gives even more time for flavors to meld for you know the sauce to sit on there and be like hey how are you doing <laughs> yeah, you know and uh, and then one more time a little fire and bam bam yeah do it like that bam right yeah. We'll see how I did. Like I said, you never, you don't know until you start cutting into them things. I can see this one's a little straighter. I might get three ribs out of that actually right there, or maybe four. And a couple out of that one too. These ones are a little more slanted that way. But so, you want to square up a rib right there and right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They held together very nicely. I will say that. And I'll say, too, if this was the rib that I got from last year, for last year, and it was vacuum sealed and properly done, from the factory or whatever. I will one with that shit. Look at that shit. Look at the meanness of that one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is 
That's got some, yeah. You can see how it pulled away from the bone here underneath. And right here on the edge. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it's probably going to be good. Once again, like I said, this is this time that I'm not panicking at, at the river. It's when you, and I can show you ever watch, you see the, the people and they're, they're trying to get it done at the right time. <clears throat> With ribs, it's all about that timing. That means at the rib off, I have to be down in there at 8 o'clock. No, later. I have to be down in there with the ribs, with the cutting board set up, with knife, a uh, tent all already from the day before. And here we go. You guys know it. We all know it. It's just the point of executing it. Right? I mean, that's all what it comes down to. You know, we all know what to do. It's the point of doing it. Right? And I say right like that again. Sorry. Rolling my eyes at myself now. I can't see any of your comments either because they're way out there. But. Smells so good here, though. Wow. All right. I got the charcoal in the Weber. Weber. What? No. Neighbor. Weber. Weber. It's a Weber. Get to the chopper! Okay. Uh, now we got to get the cat off the damn table and uh, 
See if I can transfer you guys outside. Probably can, right? Right? Right. Okay. Cameras, re reassign, and then come back. Okay.